And we meet yet again on this Thursday, second day of June, 2022. I'm Dan Koontz and this is Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Here we go again. 57 degrees, clouds. We are in for some stormy weather. Can't sing the song. If I did, we have to pay the estate of Harold Arlen a bunch of money. We don't want to do that. Flash Flood Watch begins this afternoon, 2 o'clock this afternoon, runs until 1 o'clock in the morning. And uh, we could be in for some interesting weather. A lot of instability in the atmosphere. The sun's going to get higher and higher in the sky as we're getting closer and closer to summer. The days are getting longer. All those things come into, and then we got to, the atmosphere itself is unsettled. We, have, we you combine all those things, and we're looking for it's pretty interesting weather. Really, all the way through the weekend. Uh, this upcoming weekend, uh, going to be cool and wet. Uh, another one of those. Forecast details are on the way, plus your news, plus your sports. Speaking of sports, in the back half of the program, uh, Apple Sox Baseball, the Fan Fest is tonight at Paul Thomas Senior Field. It's free, it's open to the public. Come on in, meet the team, grab a bite to eat, pick up some tickets, watch them work out, win some prizes. Fan Fest tonight at Paul Thomas Senior Stadium. We're going to get you in the mood for Apple Sox Baseball. Uh, we're going to talk to Mitch Darlington and Mason Philly. Mitch, of course, is the new head coach of the Wenatchee Apple Sox. Mason Philly is a big left-hander out of Arkansas who is going to be the opening night starting pitcher tomorrow night. They'll take on the Bend Elks. they got Bend Elks Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, this upcoming weekend and then Monday, next Monday, the 6th day of June, the home opener for the Wenatchee Apple Sox back for another uh, summer of baseball for their 21st season. We'll have that in the back half of the program. And it's Thursday. Pause for pets. Returns from our friends at the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society. It is going to be Ruby the Cat joining us today. Ruby needs a home. Ruby's got lots of personality. We'll introduce you to Ruby. But the real big thing we're going to be concentrating on today is going to be the weather. Uh, it's going to be pretty crazy. I think we're going to be okay, though, for Friday night for commencement exercises outside for Wenatchee High School. We'll see. Details on the way. Let's take our tour around the valley. Just about uh, three or four minutes ago, Uriah and I were looking around at the uh, Heights camera and there was a deer. Uh, and we followed it all over the place. It was really cool, really neat. And then the deer took off right before the show started. So it's no longer in your frame. You see the lower left-hand corner, the little splotch of green. That's where the deer was hanging around. Get a little breakfast. Uh, as we look out over the Wenatchee Valley, the foothills are very Green, indeed. They have not begun the baking out process yet, and for a good reason. It's been cool and wet for a, just a ridiculously long amount of time. April and then May, and June is picking up where May left off. May picked up where April left off. Wouldn't mind having an extended stretch of sunny, mild weather. That is not in the forecast. Good morning to the valley with East Wenatchee taking most of the attention. Camera number two. It is off to see Sunny Slope and Old Station and the Yotabashim Bridge and the Cascades from our Cougar Ridge camera. Nice view there. The Stimmel Complex in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Uh, of course, Sunny Slope continues to grow up Sunny Slope. All the way up, uh, all the way up Birch Mountain there. A little slice of Omi Gardens. Good view there. Camera number three. Again, I don't know, Uriah gets to choose and I get to say, oh, that's, well, it's blowing. That's a large body of water. I'm guessing it's probably Lake Chelan. Uh, it looks maybe, is that like Green's Knob? Wow, great guess, Dan. We haven't used, <laughs> I haven't guessed on that one in a long time. Green's Knob is uh, quite a ways up Lake Chelan area. I think we had that pointed south. I'm not 100% sure. There's even SkyFi Towers even farther up the lake from Green's Knob, but I think that's the farthest one up the lake that actually has a camera on it, and it's blowing around a little bit. Good morning to Lake Chelan. Uh, that's a ways up there. That's, I don't know, maybe 20 miles north of Manson, roughly. I'm just as the crow flies, I'm guessing there. I haven't been up there for a long time. And camera number four. I'm glad that I'm glad we used that Green's Knob camera. That was neat. Oh, wow. Um, Stein? Stein Hill. Formerly Steins Hill. I don't know why I always pluralized it. Everybody I know always called it Steins Hill, but then you look at the maps and it just says Stein Hill. Of course, named after the great cashmere pioneer Jerry Hill. As we look back over uh, towards uh, Dryden 
and then past that Bishaston and past that Leavenworth and past that Winton and past that Coles Corner. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. That's a beautiful view. Uh, very walkable. It's a bit of a workout, but you can hike up to the top of Stein Hill and that's the view you're going to get. If we flip that around the other direction, 180 degrees, you would see Kashmir. So good morning to the Upper Valley from us down here in little old Winnetachi Town, USA. You ready for some slow moving thunderstorms? Most people aren't, but that's what we're going to be dealing with. Again, a flash flood watch for our area begins at 2 o'clock this afternoon, goes until 1 o'clock tomorrow morning. Uh, they're going to continue throughout the afternoon into the evening hours. Right about 7 to about 9 tonight is the best chance of some pretty active weather for the Wenatchee Valley. These are very slow moving, so they could pop up give a little a very concentrated and intense amount of rain in a small location and then it stops and it moves a little bit and then it happens again obviously lightning becomes a bit of an issue so um, and of course burn scars where we've had all these wildfires over the last few years there's uh, no vegetation to hold the dirt and the soil to the side of the mountains and the gullies and they got to go someplace uh, so yeah, just a quick heads up. It, it could be intense at times. Some places could get quite a bit of rain and some thunder. Other places, nothing at all. That's the nature of thunderstorms. Uh, they seem to be indiscriminate. They pop up and they go away. Now, as far as the weekend is concerned, yeah, well, we're gonna cool right back down again. Everybody's gonna get some rain Saturday, Saturday night, Sunday, Sunday night. Uh, Quite a bit of rain, really, all weekend long is expected for uh, north central Washington and most of eastern Washington for that matter. You're not going to escape the rain. It doesn't really matter where you go. The whole state's going to be dealing with rain, especially Saturday and Sunday, which unfortunately is also the weekend. Now, of course, the Wenatchee High School commencement exercises are held outside, rain or shine, 8 o'clock tomorrow night at Lee Bofto Field at the Apple Bowl. We will be televising it in high definition and stereophonic sound. Right now, as we look at the timeline, I think we're going to be okay. I don't think we're going to get wet. Now, we may get a little wet when we're setting up our gear, when people are filing in, the gates open at 7 o'clock, the commencement exercises begin at 8 o'clock. We may be dry. We'll know a lot more at this time tomorrow, but that might be the one window when we can avoid all of this stuff, which is just in the nick of time. If you're going to shoot off fireworks, and they always do to close out the commencement exercises, it's best that you do it inside. That's been my experience anyway. From the National Weather Service in detail, here we go. Again, we do have that uh, flash flood watch. It begins from 2 o'clock this afternoon until 1 o'clock tomorrow morning. Rain and sun and some thunderstorms. If you are caught in a thunderstorm, you're going to find heavy rain coming down. We'll get up to about 78, by far the warmest day of the year. We hit 75 yesterday, exactly normal. Very mild for the overnight low, 57 tonight. But again, the big story is going to be late this afternoon into the early evening hours, the very warmest part of the day when the atmosphere is at its most unstable. That's the best chance for some uh, localized thunderstorms and heavy rain. And wind, too. Can't forget about wind. It picks up in some locations. So it's going to be very unsettled tonight. We continue on Friday. Friday starts the cool down period again. Could see some afternoon thunderstorms. It's going to be cooler. Uh, chance of rain is at about 70%, but we're hoping by the time commencement exercises begin uh, Friday evening that the rain will be tapered off. The chance of rain goes down to 20% on Friday night. I like that. Still going to be cloudy. The weekend looks very indoorsy-like. Uh, rain, most of it coming down on Saturday with a high of 65. We're going to have rain overnight Saturday night for everybody. Overnight low of about 52, rain all day Sunday for everybody in a high of only 66. We dry out on Monday, but we're not going to be real warm. We've been saying that since, what, March? <laughs> uh, the big word, as you look at that, is just unstable. Nothing's really, no real consistent weather. We get a little bit of everything. It's like, it's like a weather smorgasbord, a weather buffet. You get a little bit of it all. And again, a little worried about thunderstorms this afternoon. Hopefully they don't pan out. Uh, nine minutes after the hour, almost 10 minutes after the hour, after a quick, did you find the deer? Ah, he's still looking for the deer. Uh, after a quick one minute break, we're going to give you the news. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life Channel. Crystal's Restaurant and Lounge in Leavenworth has a warm environment to enhance your dining experience. 
serving breakfast, lunch, and dinner seven days a week. Crystal's Intimate Lounge is a wonderful place to relax and dine with beautiful views of the mountains. Do you have a special occasion coming up? Call Crystal's to reserve their event space. Whether your event is grand, intimate, or casual, Crystal's provides unforgettable food and superb service. Crystal's Restaurant and Lounge, proud to be serving fabulous food and drinks. You are driven to succeed. This drive is part of who you are, part of your cultura, your valores. With achievement comes a sense of orgullo. It builds your community. You stand on the shoulders of those who have walked before you, the ones who pushed you to succeed. You have the choice to overcome the challenges that arise in your life. You decide your future. Si se puede. Clouds and sun doing battle as we get going here on this Thursday morning. 57 degrees. Could see some pretty intense, fast-moving thunderstorms in pockets really all over the viewing area. Uh, throughout the uh, late afternoon into the early evening hours, we start cooling down. A wet and cool weekend will be coming our way shortly. We begin with this story. The woman at the center of a child neglect case in which a two-year-old two son died, reported to jail this week after a long delay. 39-year-old Elaine Angelica Hurd reported to the Chelan County Jail on Tuesday to begin a 177-day sentence three years after pleading guilty to criminal mistreatment of her toddler son, Rustin Ackerson. Rustin died of severe brain trauma in 2017, and Heard and her then-boyfriend were both arrested by Douglas County deputies on suspicion of abuse. But prosecutors admitted they could not prove homicide, and Heard was allowed to plead to the lesser mistreatment charge. While well, pregnancy complications and the COVID-19 pandemic at the Okanagan County Jail led to Heard spending only 16 days behind bars after she was sentenced, that was in 2019. But back in April, Douglas County Judge Brian Huber ordered Heard to complete her full jail time in Wenatchee. She was required to report to the jail no later than yesterday. The Chelan parent accused of distributing nude images of her child's rival at Eastmont Junior High faces another court hearing next month. 47-year-old Amanda Sue Austin pled not guilty on Tuesday to charges of distributing explicit images of a child as well as second-degree burglary. East Wenatchee police say Austin and her child illegally entered Eastmont Junior High during a school day back in March and left printed nude images of a former student. The incident was allegedly part of a rivalry between Austin's child and the victim, and Douglas County prosecutors say Austin set out to harass and embarrass the student again. Austin has pled not guilty. She remains free on her own recognizance. Attorneys in Douglas County Superior Court uh, have a July 18th hearing date to decide when the case may go to trial. All outside doors uh, to the schools at the Eastmont School District will be locked during class hours until the end of the school year. Superintendent Garn Christensen said the move comes at the recommendation of East Wenatchee Police Chief Rick Johnson because of local criminal gang activity and the recent school shooting in Uvalde, Texas. Police stepped up patrols of the district's schools following the May 23rd arrest of a 14-year-old Eastmont Junior High student who allegedly made online threats to shoot up the school. On Monday, two expelled students reportedly returned to the junior high and were arrested after a foot chase with police. Police say the students were wearing blue bandanas when they ignored orders to stop and ran inside the school. Bandanas are banned at all Eastmont schools because of their connection to local gangs. Christensen said the doors at schools will be locked. Once school starts, they will remain locked. Until school is dismissed, visitors will need to use a bell or a buzzer system or their phones to talk to a staff member inside the school before they themselves will be allowed inside the school. The Moses Lake School District has found two new mascots for two of their schools. Next up, they have to rename one of the schools themselves. Moses Lake High School's mascot will be changed from the Chiefs to the Mavericks and Frontier Middle School uh, their mascot will change from the Warriors to the Spartans. A law passed by the 2021 state legislature bans the use of Native American symbols and images for school mascots, logos, 
and team names. Now, exceptions under the new law could be made if tribes in the area give their okay to the existing Native American names. But after meeting with the school district, the Confederated Tribes of the Colville Reservation asked the school district to cease using the names and the mascots. The school district still needs to find a new name for Chief Joseph's Middle School. That's expected to happen during their June 23rd school board meeting. And finally, uh, summertime. Summertime bans on outdoor burning of yard debris uh, and yard waste that went into effect on the first day of the month. That was yesterday in counties throughout north central Washington. Recreational campfires, no larger than three feet by three feet, are still allowed in approved fire pits as are propane or gas fire devices. The bans include Chelan, Douglas, Grant, and Okanagan counties. They'll be in place until at least the last day of September. That's what's making headlines on this second day of June. We'll have a newscast for you tonight at 5, 6, and 10. Grant in the anchor chair. I'll be handling sports uh, today and tomorrow. Eric's taking a couple of days off. Good for him with a preview of tonight's news. Here's Grant Olson. Good morning, Dan. Coming up tonight on the NCW Life Evening News, we'll have our weekly Pause for Pets feature from the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society. Rain and thunderstorms, including a flood watch, in our forecast today right through the weekend. I'll have all the details in your complete North Central Washington weather forecast. And in sports, Dan, you'll have the latest on the Mariners and Orioles as they wrap up their three-game series. That and all the day's news stories coming your way tonight at 5, 6, and 10 on the NCW Life Evening News. We hope to see you then. Dan? Thank you, Grant. Don't forget, you got a news tip? Get a hold of us. Look at the bottom of your screen. You can email us directly, news at ncwlife.com. If there's a story you think uh, needs our attention, you can go to our Facebook page and drop us a note on the Messenger app. Or if you go to our homepage, ncwlife.com, you'll see the contact us icon. Pretty easy, pretty self-explanatory. Try to make it as easy as possible. Mariners drop game two of the three-game series to the Orioles. We'll have highlights of that coming up. Also, the obscure holiday today in history. Some celebrity birthdays to pass along to you. Mike McNaughty has got an opinion. we got pause for pets because it's Thursday, and it's time to talk Apple Sox baseball. They play their first game of the year tomorrow on the road. Fan Fest tonight at Paul Thomas Senior Stadium. All coming up. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Live channel. got a lot to do today. While you're out and about, remember to dispose of your unused medications safely and anonymously. It's a simple act that makes your home a safer place. Next time you're at the pharmacy, just place them in the drop box. To find a location, visit medproject.org. Eighteen minutes after the hour, Ryan Mountcastle and Ramon Urias had two of the Orioles' four homers, back-to-back -back shots, as a matter of fact. Baltimore Cruz passed the Mariners 9-2 Wednesday night. Big sixth inning for Baltimore. They pulled away with five runs in the six with the home runs I already mentioned. Uh, Cedric Mullins had an RBI double, and, uh, well, things fell apart in the sixth. Don't take my word for it. You can take a look at yourself. Rubnid Odor batting 221. He's driven in 22. Odor with a drive out to the flag court. Look up. This one is trying to get to the warehouse. Rubnid Odor, a three run bomb. That's how you break it up. Orioles blast their way onto the board. A 3 0 lead. Mariners looking to get something going offensively. Here's JP Crawford to lead things off. Driven deep out to right field. JP Crawford a charge, and this is gone. Number five for JP Crawford. A bolt out to right center field. 
Now the Mariners are on the board in the fourth inning. Exit below of 103, 400 feet. And now the Mariners have runners on at first and third with two outs. He keeps the inning alive for Julio Rodriguez. Julio, big chopper up the middle. Odor waits for it. Mateo, and he is safe. He is safe at second base, and Trammell scores. Trey Mancini is looking for his first hit tonight. He's ground out and flied out. 3-2, Trey Mancini out to left. Can he do it? Oh, oh you gotta be just me. off the top of the wall. Trey with a stutter step at first as he had to motor into second. That ball just crushed. And you can see the frustration for Trey. Two-thirds of his home runs were here at home last year. All right, he's in scoring position for Austin Hayes. Austin Hayes rips this one, beats the infield. Trey Mancini around third. He's going to score. Austin Hayes, RBI single. Orioles re-extend the lead 4-2. Ryan Mountcastle, the batter. The 3-2. 3-2. Oh. Mountcastle puts a charge into this. Left field. Back is Winker looking up, and that baby's gone. A monster blast off the bat of Ryan Mountcastle, and it's 5-2. Baltimore. We're in four hits, including a home run. Urias gets into one. Left field. Backing up his Winker. Looking up. Back to back checks. Ramon Urias into the night. And it's now a 6 to 2 Orioles lead. But Odor does get into scoring position. He's at second base. And that gets Cedric Mullins to the plate. Mullins out to right field. Tramel has to play this one off the wall. Odor will jog home. Mullins is in with a double and another run scored for the O's. It's seven to two Baltimore. And here's Mancini. Hitting the gap at left center field and deep. Back is Rodriguez looking up and that baby's gone. The third home run of the inning for the Orioles and they are piling on here in the sixth. Baltimore leads this one nine to two. Raleigh, the switch hitter now over on the right side against the left-hander, Keegan Aiken. Pitch on the way, hit well, center field, Mullins racing. He's there and makes the catch on the run. And the Orioles even up the series with a 9-2 win. Keegan Aiken, two perfect innings. Mariners left-hander is supposed to be the ace. Robbie Ray didn't throw like one. He allowed four runs, six hits, six strikeouts, and three walks over five innings. The Mariners and Orioles wrap up the free game series today. Chris Flexen against Jordan Lyles. First pitch, 4.05 on Root Sports. And don't forget, we're talking Apple Sox baseball in the back half of the program. 22 minutes after the hour for the Obscura Holiday. I had a few to choose from. Today is uh, National Rossiteri Chicken Day. Very delightful. It's National Rocky Road Day. It's National Bubba Day. For all you bubbas out there, but uh, no, we're going to celebrate National Leave the Office Early Day. Yeah, cut out of work early. It's always on June 2nd, unless June 2nd falls on a weekend, and then it's uh, you find it when you can. Uh, it's an incentive to just slack off a little bit because when it comes to working, we work hard. About a third of all full-time employed Americans, about a third work more than 42 hours a week. If you have more than one job or you're self-employed, you're working 60 to 80 hours a week, which is not good for you at all. Uh, the on average, Americans work about 49 hours a week. If you average it all up, uh, that's uh, you add it all up per year, that's 350 more hours per year than the average European who really know how to take time off. Uh, fun facts about working or perhaps not working today because today is National Leave the Office Early Day. Uh, as you might imagine, Monday is the most common day of the work week where employees call in sick. Uh, the day that people call in sick the fewest is actually Friday. Except in Australia. The day in Australia that they most commonly call in sick is Tuesdays for whatever reason. Maybe they're actually sick on Tuesdays, I don't know. Uh, if you start full-time work at the age of 20 and you work 40 hours a week until you're 65 years old, you will spend 90,000 hours of your life working. Hmm. The first resume reportedly written by Leonardo da Vinci. Must have been a big resume because he was a renaissance kind of a guy, did a lot of things. And by the way, if you want to not work too hard, move to the Netherlands. 
The average full-time worker in the Netherlands works 29 hours a week. And the four-day work week, of course, is quite common in Europe. So it's national leave the office early day today. You can do what some people do. They say, hey, I'm going to lunch, and then they never come back. 25 minutes after the hour. Today in history, you know, we have our own Trojan horse incident right here in North America. It happened in 1763 on this date, June 2nd, 1763, 258 years ago today. Uh, it's now uh, Mackinac City, Michigan. Back then it was a fort. Um, the local Chippewa tribe and the local soldiers at the fort, they had an okay relationship. And then things started going downhill, but the Chippewas would always go out in front of the fort and play lacrosse for the entertainment of the soldiers at the fort. And the soldiers would open the gate and watch the ch local Native American Chippewa tribe play lacrosse. This was in uh, 1763. Well, on this date in 1763, uh, the Chippewas threw or tossed the lacrosse ball through the open gate at the fort. And then when they ran in to get the ball, they grabbed a bunch of weapons that had been smuggled in little by little by the women of the tribe. And they turned around and killed 15 of the soldiers. It was a 35-man garrison, 15 of them were killed. So they used the lacrosse game as a diversion tactic. And then when they ran into the fort to get their ball, they grabbed the rifles and boom. Happened on this date, uh, 258 years ago today. Some baseball to talk about. Uh, this is the, the day of the famous Wally Pip incident. It's hard to believe it was 97 years ago today. June 2nd, 1925, 97 years ago today. Wally Pip arrives for the game against the Washington Senators at Yankee Stadium complaining of a headache. Manager Miller Huggins says, Wally, take the day off. We'll put that kid Gehrig into the game for you today. You can rest up. Lou Gehrig uh, started at first base for that, the Yankees that day and Lou Gehrig would start at first base for the Yankees every game for the next 14 years. Wally Pipp took it pretty good. Lou Gehrig was an offensive machine. I mean, he just ripped the baseball anywhere, uh, but he had some defensive lapses, so Wally Pipp taught him the finer points of playing uh, defensive first base, because that's what teammates do. The, the, the story is a legendary story, not only in baseball, but in all the sports. What really happens is that the Yankees were just playing terrible baseball. Uh, they, they did not have a good year in 1925. And Miller Huggins basically wanted to shake the lineup up. So he benched Wally Pipp and some other players and put in some younger guys to try and shake the team up a little bit to get them to play better. It didn't work, but Lou Gehrig got a job 97 years ago today. Babe Ruth was out of a job 87 years ago today. On this date in 1935, fat, 40 years old, and not playing very good as the right fielder of the Boston Braves, Lou Gehrig, uh, Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth announces his retirement from baseball. He said, I'm out. He was given his unconditional release. He was only batting 181 at the time. He retires with 714 career home runs, by far more than anybody else had ever hit, ridiculously high numbers. Second on the list of all-time home runs when Babe Ruth retired was Lou Gehrig. He had 378 career home runs. Babe Ruth out of baseball on this date. Uh, speaking of Gehrig, there he is. Lou Gehrig died, ironically enough, 16 years to the day that he began his, uh, his sojourn, his first baseman of the New York Yankees, Lou Gehrig dies of amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. This is his apartment in New York City at the age of 37 years old. Of course, it is now known as Lou Gehrig's uh, disease. Kind of ironic, isn't it? He got the starting lineup in 1925. 16 years later, he was dead at the age of 37. And finally, much happier baseball news. 32 years ago today, at a game I was listening to at our family cabin at Lake Wenatchee on the radio. On a Friday night, June 2nd, 1990, Randy Johnson pitches the first no-hitter in Seattle Mariner history. They beat the Tigers two to nothing. Here's the final pitch. Here comes the left-hander's wine. The 0-2 pitch on the way. Swag, it's over! He has done it! High fastball, Randy Johnson being mobbed by Scott Bradley down to greet him and the entire Mariner team here on the 2nd of June. It ends at 9.51.
Pacific Daylight Time. Randy Johnson with the first Mariner no hitter in history, and they are going crazy. Everybody saluting the tallest man to ever put on a uniform in the history of baseball. Randy Johnson has done it. He has no hit the Detroit Tigers tonight, two to nothing. My oh my. That was young Randy Johnson. Remember, this was 32 years ago, so it wasn't a great game. It was a no-hitter, but he also walked six Detroit batters. Randy Johnson throws the first no-hitter in Seattle Mariner history on this date in the kingdom. 32 years ago today, let's do some birthdays. We lost Charlie Watts, of course, last August at the age of 80, one of the greatest rock and roll drummers ever. you got to put him in the top five. He's right there. The great Charlie Watts, we miss Charlie. Longtime drummer of the Rolling Stones, born in this state in 1941. And unlike uh, his bandmates, Charlie Watts led a very quiet and conservative life. Uh, didn't much care for touring. When he wasn't working with the band, he'd like to stay home with his wife. He and his wife, Shirley, were married for 56 years. In the world of rock and roll, that's a miracle. Charlie Watts, born in this state in 1941, we miss him. The Beaver is 74 years old today. Dun, 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 dun. Jerry Mathers, who was the Grand Marshal of the uh, Grand Parade here in Wenatchee for the Apple Blossom Festival back in the 90s. There was a time period when they brought in celebrities. They don't do that anymore. Good move. Jerry Mathers is 74 years old today. And Dana Carvey is 67 years old today after his bypass surgery, his botched bypass surgery that almost killed him. He hasn't really done much, but he's doing some podcasts now. He's going to go back to work. If you ever get a chance to watch the late lamented Dana Carvey show, check it out. It only ran for like nine episodes on ABC back in the early 90s. It's very hard to find. I have the DVD collection. It's hilarious. Anyway, Dana Carvey, great impressionist, 67 years old today. 32 minutes after the hour, still to come an opinion from my mad dog, McNaughty. We're talking Apple Sox baseball with the head coach and a big strapping left-handed pitcher from Arkansas who's joined the team and he'll be pitching tomorrow night down in Bend. That conversation coming up. But first, pause for pets. Ruby the cat needs a home. It's time to visit with our friends to the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society. Hi everyone, my name is Haley and I'm with the Wenatchee Valley Humane Society. And with me this week is Ruby. She's going to wander away. Um, Ruby is a 13-year-old tortoiseshell that has come into our shelter and who is looking for a new forever home. Isn't that right? Yeah. Um, she's a very sweet, talkative lady. You could hold a conversation with her and she's very agreeable. She goes, yeah. 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 Um, she's very calm and easygoing. Um, here, she's just walking around our room, making friends with everyone that she sees. Um, she seems slightly interested in toys. Um, she at least rubs up on them and enjoys hanging out with them. She is probably looking for a home with probably no other animals, or at least no other rambunctious animals, because she is 13, um, so she needs a quieter, softer place to land. But other than that, she's good with kids, I, and she loves everyone that she meets. And if you're interested in getting Miss Ruby here, you can come on down to our shelter. We're open seven days a week from 11 to 6, and we're closed from 1.30 to 2.30 for quiet time. The Wenatchee Valley Humane Society is located at 1474 South Wenatchee Avenue. Give them a call at 509-662-9577 or visit their website at wenatchiehumane.org. Are you ready to freshen up your home? Boswell's expansive two-story showroom is filled with high-quality furniture that's always discounted to give you their best price every day. Boswell's is receiving new furniture deliveries each week, so you'll be sure to find just what you need for your home without the wait. Complimentary design assistance and free local delivery. Superior customer service and the best value for your money. Start at Boswell's on Easy Street. It's closer than you think. 
Did you know that nearly 50% of pet poisoning cases involve human medications and prescription drugs? Sometimes the culprit's a curious dog, but cats get into their share of trouble as well. Other times, pet owners mistakenly give their pets their own medications that are safe to people but toxic to their pets. Dr. Shauna Bayes and her staff care about your pets. Go to pawsandclawsvh.com for a complete list of medications to avoid or call 888-PAWS. Find ageless beauty at Chelan Valley Skin Care. Cindy offers the most up-to-date treatments for personalized skin care. If sagging skin or acne scars are some skin challenges for you, Chelan Valley Skin Care offers non-invasive, non-surgical skin care. With up-to-date technology for shorter treatment plans, you'll benefit from Cindy's expertise to help you accomplish your skin care goals. Please stop by their website for details on all their services. Call Cindy today for your free consultation. Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa has hot tubs in stock now. Spas are scientifically proven to improve sleep and ease arthritis pain. Let us help you find the perfect spa today. Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa is helping families reconnect one hot tub at a time. At Wenatchee Valley College, the Allied Health Programs help students like me make a difference in the lives of others. We leave here as medical assistants, laboratory technicians, pharmacy technicians, radiologic technicians, and nurses ready to care for our communities. Whatever your reason, WVC can prepare you for a career in healthcare. Hi, uh, I'm Chuck Dronin, Managing Member at Epladolin Retirement and Assisted Living. It's been a tough year for all of us, but especially for those working and living in senior care facilities. Over the course of these many difficult months, our staff at Epladolin has been vigilant in adhering to federal and state guidelines to protect and assure the safety of our residents and their caregivers. If you're in need of assisted living for a loved one, give us a call at Epladolin. We're here for you. Attention RVers and campers! There's a huge RV liquidation event going on now at Click It RV of Moses Lake. Click It RV of Moses Lake must make room for new inventory arriving daily. There's a huge selection of top quality RVs that must be liquidated to make room for new arrivals. You're going to want to be at this event. Get to Click It RV Moses Lake's huge liquidation event. Get to Click It RV now. Are you going to be mad, bro? You probably already are. Get the best deals anywhere at Click It RV of Moses Lake. We guarantee it. This is Mike Mad Dog McNaughty, and everybody is entitled to my opinion. Now, a question I ask most of my counseling clients is this. What do you want? Now, lots of folks say they want to be happy, but they need to think deeper than that. What is it that they want from life? What are they working for? At the end of their time on this mortal coil, how do they want to be remembered? Who is the person they want to be? And do they want this enough to do what's necessary to achieve it? Now, this is a good question to ask yourself, and one I often ask myself. What do I really want, you know? And is how I'm living my life helping me get it? This is Mike Mad Dog McNaughty, and that's my opinion. Tune in for the commencement ceremonies of the class of 2022 on the NCW Life Channel. Watch Friday, June 3rd for Eastmont High School's graduation at 6 p.m. followed by Wenatchee High School's at 8 p.m. Coverage is sponsored by Bob's Burgers and Brew, Global Car Care, Harvest Valley Pest Control, JDSA Law, and Mini Blinds and more. Celebrate the class of 2022 with your local TV station, the NCW Life Channel.
Bob's Burgers and Brew in Wenatchee. Only the best. Bob's Burgers and Brew in Wenatchee. Only the best. I'm Dr. Wayne Latimer. I'm a chiropractic physician. I have postgraduate certifications in both whiplash trauma and rehab as well as sports medicine. The location is great. The light and the visibility, the 17-foot ceilings are fantastic. You can go into a lot of clinics and it's very clinical. People really like the spa environment, so my whole premise was take a spa environment, add the very serious rehab, and give people an enjoyable way to get better over time. Summertime is almost here, and that means that Wenatchee Apple Sox baseball is right around the corner. Come spend your summer nights at Paul Thomas Senior Stadium and root on the Apple Sox. Apple Sox baseball is family-friendly and affordable, with tickets starting as low as $7. Come on out to opening day on June 6th, sponsored by Ag Supply, as the Apple Sox open up a seven-game homestand to begin the summer. Wenatchee Apple Sox baseball, celebrating summer one inning at a time. At D.A. Davidson in Wenatchee, they believe your investment success begins with a personalized plan. A plan that is the roadmap you need to navigate your way to living your best years in retirement. D.A. Davidson can help you create a plan so you can take the time to enjoy the finer things in life. Let the financial advisors at D.A. Davidson help chart your retirement future today. Introducing Alpine Air Man. Because every home needs a superhero to eliminate poor indoor air quality, send inefficient operating equipment packing, and cut high energy bills down to size. For heating or cooling and equipment replacement, turn to the experts and the superheroes at Carrier and Alpine Air. We offer the best deals on high efficiency Carrier products, along with friendly, knowledgeable service and incredible savings to fit your budget. My name is Anaisa Lemus and I teach at John Newberry Elementary. I had a tooth in the front that was just always causing me problems. It, it was just happening so regularly. I went to go get a root canal done and the root canal didn't help a whole lot because when it came back, both of my parents went to uh, Dr. Davis's office. They really recommended him because he had done such a great job on their teeth. I went and really have had a really pleasant experience with him. He just made me real, feel really at ease with everything. He was really confident with what he was doing. He said, you know, this is one of his favorite parts of his job, which really made it easier for me because, you know, when you're really passionate about something, you know, they're going to do a good job. As a teacher, my students, you know, I'll tell them randomly sometimes, oh yeah, with my fake tooth, they're always so shocked. Like, what? It looks like your real tooth. And I'm really happy with the results now. This is Dr. John Divis. Please call us today. The Wenatchee Valley. Here, most of us really enjoy the great outdoors, and most of us try to make the most of our natural resources. Here at Apple Valley Honda, we know that for generations, we have harnessed nature to sustainably power the West, and we are proud to be part of that tradition as an environmentally green dealership award winner. Being a green dealership means Apple Valley Honda has reduced our overall environmental impact, reduced our total energy output, and we have found better ways to repurpose our resources. Our smart dealership was was built with sustainability in mind from the ground up, meaning no wasted power, water, or other precious resources. In this beautiful valley we live here, we work here, we play here, and we are here to serve you, whether it's taking care of our environment or providing you with a new or used vehicle or servicing your current one. We are proud to be a green dealership and an Apple Valley Honda. We are so proud to live in this wonderful community. Welcome back to Wake Up in Wenatchee Valley. We're on the campus of Wenatchee Valley College. Paul Thomas Senior Stadium will be the site of 20-some-odd Wenatchee Apple Sox home games this year, starting on Monday, June 8th, with uh, opening home night here. Mitch Darlington is the new head coach of the Wenatchee Apple Sox, and this strapping guy to his left hopefully will be throwing a lot of strikes and getting a lot of W's for the team. He's out of Arkansas. Uh, introduce uh, our left-handed starting pitcher, my friend. Yeah, so we got uh, Mason Philly. He's out of the University of Arkansas Monticello. 
left-handed arm, uh, really, really firm fastball, running up 91, 92, uh, really good breaking pitch, and uh, we're excited to roll him out Friday night against Bend. Mason had a really good year last year, very good year, as a matter of fact. Left-hander who can throw strikes. That's gold in your, in your thing, isn't it, Mitch? Oh, man, you can find a starting left-handed arm that can, that can pitch it a little bit and consistently let you compete in games. That's, that's huge in the West Coast League. You've just been in town for a couple of days, uh, Mason. You flew in from uh, Arkansas. You're here now in town. You're with your billet family. You biked the loop. Yes, you sir. said you weren't quite ready for that yet. Yeah. But I know you've only been here for 48 hours. What are your impressions of our little hamlet so far? Uh, I've liked it so far. Everything's been pretty nice. Family's nice and everything looks good out here. Ready. Baseball player from, uh, from Arkansas. Why, why baseball? Are you a multi-sport guy who happens to be good at baseball or are you just a baseballer? Uh, I mean, I played all sports growing up, but definitely could see talent in baseball. So I chose pretty often in high school that I wanted to play. How did, uh, how did Mason end up on your radar there, Mitch? Yeah, so during my time coaching at Big Bend Community College, we um, ended up sending a couple guys out to University of Arkansas Monticello and uh, just kind of established a relationship with their coaching staff. And so, you know, when I got hired this fall, I thought, hey, that's probably a good school to tap into. I don't think any other West Coast League schools are pulling from out there. So gave them a call and asked if they had any arms available. And, you know, Mason was uh, the first guy on their list, told me uh, – Good arm, was going to be the ace of their staff this year, um, strike thrower, and uh, just a leader in their program. So it was a, it was a no-brainer for me. What's, uh, what's the marching orders that you got from Mason's coach before he came up here? Because the last thing you want to do is, is blow this guy's arm out at the age of 20. Right, right. So, we, yeah, we're not going to run him up anywhere near, you know, a high pitch count. Um, we kind of see him being in our starting rotation as of now, and you know, giving us four quality innings and uh, trying to keep that pitch count around 80 or lower and, you know, just giving us a quality start every time that he goes out there. In fact, he's going to be starting uh, down in Central Oregon uh, for the opening night on, on the third against Bend. You've already uh, punched his ticket to be the, the starter. Yep. So, you know, sitting down with Coach Vaughn, our pitching coach, we, you know, we're looking at the arms available for that weekend and we thought, you know, when you go on the road and it's someone else's opening night, you know, that's a, that's a tough environment to pitch in. That's kind of a, a big crowd. They're going to draw good, uh, good attendance. So we thought, you know, what better guy than a guy that's going into a senior year of college baseball. He started a bunch of big games. He's, you know, pitched in the Northwoods League for summer baseball. Um, and so we'd, we'd like to have a guy that's just not going to be rattled by the moment and go out there and compete for us. What's your out pitch, Mason? If you're not having a very good day and you're having a hard time finding the strike zone, what's the one pitch you can rely on that you know you're going you're gonna to at least give yourself a chance? Definitely the changeup. The changeup? Yes, sir. Which means you have to have a pretty good fastball, too. Yes, sir. Set him up with the fastball, get him swinging with the changeup. <laughs> so he has an out pitch now. Uh, early on in the season, who's going to be calling the pitches? Because he has no relationship with your catcher. Is your pitching coach going to be handling that? Are you going to go ahead and let the let Mason and his catcher develop a relationship? What how's that going to work? Yeah, so we have um, we have some experienced catchers coming in. We have uh, C.J. Horn, um, who's also heading into his senior year of college baseball. He's playing at Ball State. He's going to be available our opening weekend. He'll probably start opening night. Um, and you know, I think both me and Aaron really trust him calling the game. Um, he's called the game all year for Ball State. Um, and I think he's going to do a fantastic job. I think him and Mason will develop a relationship pretty quick and, you know, kind of let them call the game from there. The um, good news for the Apple Sox is that the players are starting to shuffle in from uh, points beyond. Bad news, well, it's kind of bad news. Gonzaga, of course, has made the NCAA tournament, as they do almost every year, and you get a lot of players from Gonzaga who end up playing summer ball here for Wenatchee. So the roster might be a little later than normal filling up. Right, right. So yeah, a lot of those Division One guys, um, I mean, even UW, you know, their school and finals week is going June 6th through the 10th. So um, not going to have our Zags probably for opening night, not going to have our Huskies for opening night. Um, and then we pull from California a lot. We have a, uh, an arm from Santa Clara um, and a bunch of guys coming from down there. So it's going to take a little bit of time, probably be around mid-June before it's really our final set roster. And uh, but, but from here on out, you know, we're going to have some 10-day guys that are going to do a great job and compete for us. Um, and they're locals, Chelan, Brewster, right. in this area. So Yeah, that's the nice part of having some locals on the team as well is, um, you know, they're already in town, the Brewster guys, the Chelan guys, and Chipman from Kashmir. So a lot of those guys are going to be ready to go early on. 
Uh, Mason's going to have a few off days and a few down days while he's here in Wenatchee between now and August. Uh, what, what do you, what's your recommendations for Mason for things to do on the occasional <laughs> day off around here in Wenatchee? Or is he just going to live here at the ballpark? Yeah, you know, me and Allie were actually talking about that a little bit. She, uh, she had a yoga instructor that you know, was wanting um, to come out here and give the guys a, a yoga class. And he's, or she's done that for uh, the Wenatchee Wild, the hockey team in town here. And so we thought, oh, that'd be a good off day plan. Um, other than that, you know, there's a ton of hiking. I'm a big hiker, grew up in Leavenworth. And I was thinking it'd be fun for the guys maybe to spend a day together and go hike up into Colchuck or, you know, just go see some of the spots that are beautiful here in, in our Wenatchee Valley. Strong legs, strong arm, right? I mean, that's, uh, I know a lot of pitchers, if you don't have a strong bottom half, you're not going to be able to throw strikes, right? That's going to help, right, Mitch? Right, yep. Uh, yeah, we won't be having him hike the day before start. He'll have to sit at home if he's throwing on a Tuesday and we have an off day on a Monday. But, uh, yeah, other than that, he can, he can go explore as much as he wants. Are you going to let this team mature on its own, or are you going to uh, establish a style? Do you even have a style <laughs> in, in that respect? Right. Yeah, you know, like we talked about a little in the fall, it, it, it kind of depends on your roster um, with the style you play. Um, for us, I, I think we have a bunch of guys that can really run. Um, we have a middle infielder, Joichiro Oyama, stole 30 bags in California this year. Um, he's headed to UC Irvine, and Enzo Apodaca, as, as the Apple Sox fan saw last year, can really run. So, you know, top of the order, they're going to run, um, and I, we're going to put the game in motion. Um, but other than that, you know, from a pitching philosophy, I just like guys that work quick. You know, don't don't walk the yard, limit free bags, and uh, and keep our defense engaged. Mason, the uh, the uh, we talked about your 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 pitch repertoire. Are you a baseball lifer? Is this it? Is this what you want to do, or is this I'm gonna have fun while I'm young no. and I can throw strikes? <laughs> yeah, I'm here for a reason. Yeah. Yes, sir. What, what's your goal? You want to you want to be in the show? Yes, sir. You think you have what it takes? Do you think it? Because confidence sure. is an important part of that. Do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Mason uh, Mason's a, a fantastic arm, and you know sometimes you go to these schools, Division two schools, and it's hard for guys to find you. And I think uh, this summer uh, getting exposure here in the West Coast League, he's going to have some eyes on him, and it'll be a great opportunity for him going forward. How important is it to get off to a good start? Uh, for, you know, it's 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 a long season. Right. You play almost every day from uh, from coming up on June 3rd all the way into mid-August. How important is it to have a, a quick start? Or with the split season and the expanded right. playoffs, you got a better but, but, you know a better chance of making the playoffs. Right. Yeah. No. It's it's huge getting off to a good start with a first half winner clinching a playoff berth, and then that second half, you know, clinching a playoff berth. Um, you know, <laughs> they're just as equal. You know, the winner of the first half gets in, winner of the second half gets in. So. Um, that's going to be my message from day one is, you know, winning is going to be important. We need to get rolling early and not get behind the eight ball and, um, and then have some catching up to do. And, you know, not having our, our Huskies or Zags or whoever's here or not here, you know, none of that's going to matter. W whatever we have in our dugout is going to be good enough to get the job done. And so that's going to kind of be our motto as we uh, start the season. Thursday night is Fan Fest. It's totally free. You can come. You can meet the team. You can watch them work out. If you've got your tickets, you can pick up your tickets. There'll be food here. It's a little wing ding, a chance to meet Mitch and the team. It's on the road. Of, I think first thing probably Friday morning, you're on the bus and heading to band, right? Yeah, very early in the morning we'll be taking off. So. Right. Yep. So, uh, three games against band. Then the home opener is on Monday, uh, June 6th against Port Angeles. Yep. Now, every team, the Port Angeles lefties, so, you know, every, every player on their team is left-handed. <laughs> I mean, even the third baseman and the shortstop. Right. I don't know how they get it. Get away with that. Crazy. <laughs> uh, Mitch, I'll let you have the final word. A uh, message for you Apple Sox fans out there. Mitch, I'll let you, let you take it home as we're ready to play baseball for the 2022 season. It's all yours, buddy. Yeah, yeah. I would just say uh, we're going to need every single one of you guys out here at the ballpark. Um, it's, it's more than just what we have in our dugout and with our coaching staff. Um, our team and this organization is based off our fans and every one of you guys here in Wenatchee Valley. So we're, we're looking forward to meeting you and having you guys uh, support us all year long. Mason, uh, any message to your friends down in southern Arkansas? This show is huge in southern Arkansas. I know they're <laughs> going to be seeing it. Go ahead and do a shout out if anybody wants to say hi to you. Uh, Thanks, Mason. Uh, we appreciate yeah, it. I, I got <laughs> left handed pitchers. Yeah. I forget how oh, they are. Yeah, I got lost. Right? <laughs> yeah. Stick to pitching. That's all I've got to do. <laughs> Interviews aren't his thing. Well, that's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Welcome, to the, welcome to the big city. You're going to like it here. Thank Mitch you. will be regular visitors throughout the course of the of year. Of course, yep. Again, Apple Sox home opener on June 6th against Port Angeles. You can listen to the games with Storm and Joel Norman on the Apple Sox Radio Network. We'll be televising a couple of games this summer as well. Baseball is back. Mason, I got this pitch I invented. 
Uh, you got, it's all about the position of the, of, the, uh, of the ring finger. You start out, it starts out fast on the way to the plate, it slows down, and right about three or four feet before it gets to the plate, it speeds back up again. I'll What's show it to you. What's that pitch called? That's Bugs Bunny taught it to me. Nice. <laughs> Go watch him wake up in Anchee Valley. We'll be right back. I love that joke. All right. Transform your windows with a variety of colors and styles like the Allure Transitional Window Covering by Lafayette Interior Fashions. Hi, this is Darren with Mini Blinds and More. We can install the latest and greatest in technology to open and close your blinds with only a touch of a button. From the largest windows in your home to room darkening shades for the bedroom. From stylish shades for your entertainment room to custom blinds for those hard to fit places. We have a solution for all of your window covering needs. We offer a variety of window coverings from Lafayette Interior Fashions. Call us today. We are Mini Blinds and More, your local blind store. If you are looking for dependable car service and repair, visit the good guys at Quick Lube and Tune. They've been keeping cars and trucks in the Wenatchee Valley running smooth for 35 years. Quick Lube and Tune is your hometown shop for a 10-minute oil change, complete tune-ups, alignments, brakes, mufflers, air conditioning service, and more. Get more life out of your vehicle by bringing it to the local guys you can trust at Quick Lube and Tune on South Wenatchee Avenue. Hi folks, welcome to Save Mart. How can we help you today? Uh, we're looking for a recliner. Okay, right this way. Go ahead and move this chase on the other side. You can just look on the Great, I want that one. I like that one. That's a great choice. And I want this one as well. Okay. And I definitely want this one. Ooh. You find it at Save Mart. Full service at a low, low price. You love to help others. You need a solid career. You can have it all with help from Charter College. Our 10-month medical assistant program prepares you to work in healthcare settings like physician offices, rehab centers, and clinics. You'll learn to take patient vitals, assist with exams, administer injections, and maintain medical records. When you're ready to launch a rewarding healthcare career, visit chartercollege.edu because we work to get you to work. And we are back on this Thursday edition of Wake Up, Wenatchee Valley. As you probably know by now, things weather-wise are going to be a little cattywampus. A flash flood watch has been posted. It begins at 2 o'clock this afternoon, runs until 1 o'clock in the morning. So right about that 4, 5, 6 o'clock period tonight is when things can really get going because these thunderstorms are very slow-moving. And if the situation develops, and it looks like they're going to be, uh, you could see you could be caught in a pretty intense thunderstorm that could come really out of nowhere, and it would be everything: severe rain, maybe uh, some some isolated flooding, certainly winds. There's just a lot of instability in the atmosphere. And again, it goes from two o'clock this afternoon to one o'clock tomorrow morning, and these are thunderstorms, so they could pop up, dump a bunch of rain, stop, move on, and then dump again. Some places could get significant thunderstorms and some none at all. But for the weekend, everybody gets some rain and some cool temperatures. It'll start uh, really overnight Friday night into Saturday. As I mentioned before, it looks like for the Wenatchee High School commencement exercises, which will be outside at 8 o'clock tomorrow night at Lee Boftel Field at the Apple Bowl, we should be dry. You're, that's what it's looking like. Now, we'll give you the latest news on that come tomorrow. Uh, but for the weekend, Friday night rain, Saturday rain, Saturday night rain, Sunday rain, also a pop-up thunderstorm, still possible, will dry out on Monday. But there will be no escaping the precipitation this weekend, especially Saturday night and Sunday, but still hit and miss uh, showers possible on Saturday as well. And the temperatures are going to drop back down below normal. From the National Weather Service, here we go. Mild day today at 78 would be the warmest day of the year. But again, those, uh, those thunderstorms could very well develop across almost all of our viewing area in north central Washington. 57 for the overnight low tonight. We start the cool down on Friday. Again, thinking we're going to be dry. 
early evening uh, tomorrow night for the commencement exercises. 52 for the overnight low. Rain Saturday morning, drying off a little bit, and then a significant rain will begin Saturday night. It's going to rain pretty much all day Sunday. As you can see, we're going to cool way down. Only the mid-60s. We'll be in the mid-60s on Monday, but at least we'll be dry. That's it for us. We'll see you Friday. Have a good day. Bye-bye.